Good evening. Welcome to this Bible study of Evangel Assemblies of God. I am Brother Marlon from Durham, North Carolina. A blessed Holy Week and Passover, especially to our senior pastor, J.B. Ellis, and his lovely wife, Cheryl, to our church family leaders and members, and to all of you who are watching. Tonight, I bring to you God's word amidst the ongoing pandemic coronavirus that we should trust God in difficult times. But first, let us sing to the Lord in worship, declaring our full trust in him. Oh 
fortress. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we welcome your presence among us. We love you and we reverence you. Lord, tonight be magnified, be exalted. Amen. We are living in difficult times now with the rest of the world. By this time, we know we are not exempted from challenging situations, difficult situations, sicknesses, deaths, loss of jobs, income. A part of reality is bad things to happen, even to good people, even to God's people. The question is, how do we respond to these events? Can we still trust God? Can we continue to rejoice in God when things go wrong? The answer is absolutely yes. We should trust God at all times and under all circumstances. In Psalms chapter 91, verses 1 to 2, it says that he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge, my fortress, my God, in Him I will trust. This hymn of trust is very applicable to our present difficult situation. Above and beyond the pandemic, we seek God and his timely, relevant, and powerful word. Surely God is here. He is now with us. This first day of the feast of the Passover, when we remember how God protected the Israelites from 10 plagues and he delivered them from slavery in Egypt. If the Almighty God saved the Israelites from plagues, not one or two, but 10 plagues, we can trust him to save us from this one particular pandemic. So let me encourage you on that there are two important matters in this Bible study I'm going to share. First, we should trust God. And second, we ask how do we show our trust in God? Why should we trust God? You know, we trust God because he is good all the time. We trust God for who he is, for his character that does not change. He is good. Some people are tempted to doubt God's goodness when things and people go wrong. They even accuse God of causing sufferings. Let me illustrate with this story. There was this man who was a Christian who went to the barber shop to have his haircut. Unbeliever. And knowing that this man was a Christian, asked him mockingly, if God is a good God and a God of love, why are there lots of people suffering? The Christian answered by asking a question. And he asked, are you a good barber? And the barber boastfully replied, 
replied, Oh, I am not only a good barber, but I am the best barber in town. The Christian asked, he replied, If you are a good barber and the best as you claim to be, why is that there are still men who wear long and unkept hair, long hair? The barber replied and said, Oh, the reason why their hair is long and not nice is because they don't come to me. The, the Christian answered back and replied, So it is with our good God. There are many people who are suffering because they don't come to God. They refused to believe and rejected him who is the source of life, joy, peace, love, and abundant blessings. God is good all the time, even during our difficult times. You know, when the Israelites were taken captive and, exile, and exiled in Babylonia, God assured them of his good thoughts and good intention. God is good. In Jeremiah 29 verses 11 to 13, God said, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. Then you will call upon me and go and pray to me and I will listen to you. In verse 13, it says, And you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. So another reason we trust God is because he makes all things work together for good. We trust God for what he does, and he does good all the time. In Romans chapter 8, verse 28, this is my favorite verse. It says, and we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are the cold according to his purpose. So let us trust God with his truth and not doubt his goodness in difficult times. Again, let me tell you a story to stress my point. You know, there was a man who accidentally cut his little finger. And he went to his pastor asking for prayer. And surely the pastor prayed and afterwards gave a command and said, all things work together for good. Praise the Lord, brother. Praise the Lord. This man living was so mad. And he said to himself, I lost a finger. And this pastor said to praise the Lord because all things work together for good. How could this be good for me? Do you sometimes question God when bad things happen to you? And you ask, Lord, how could this be good for me? But back to the story, the man one day went hunting. He started walking towards the forest. He crossed rivers and went on a long hike. And he didn't notice that he didn't notice he ventured into the territory of tribal people who are known as cannibals. You know, the cannibals, they cook their victims and eat them. So, so the cannibals captured him and brought him to their village. The next day, there was a celebration. 
the cannibals brought him before a big pot filled with water and being heated by fire. Oh, the cannibals were rejoicing. They were happy and they were looking at him to be their special meal. Then their tribal priest came to him and carefully examined his body. The tribal priest saw that he was one finger missing. So he shouted with great disappointment. And he said, stop. Oh no, this man has defect. We cannot sacrifice him to our God. Release him. So they release him and let him go. So this man, as he left the forest, hurriedly, he was very thankful to God that his life was spared. And he said to himself, my pastor was right. God is good. And he makes all things work together for good. My friends, God is good all the time. So let us trust God for his divine intervention for this current pandemic. Although we do not see him, but he is busy working for our good. So in the meantime, we should see this an opportunity. We have good opportunity for time for ourselves and family to stop and reflect issues and matters which are important in our lives. Surely, trusting God is one of them. Now, how do we show our trust in God? We can learn from the example of Paul and Silas. For doing the will of God, they were beaten and put into, and put into prison for sharing the gospel and casting out demons. Like them, we are in difficult situations. Like them, we can do at best two things. First, let us pray to God. In times of difficulties, let's praise and worship Him. Praising, praying and worshiping God move us out of difficult circumstances ultimately. We dwell in the secret place of the Most High, God's very presence, where there is fullness of joy and where all our needs are met. In the case of Paul and Silas, there came an earthquake after they praise and worship there was an earthquake and opened it opened the prison doors and have removed their chains they could have escaped but they did the right thing and witness god make all things work together for good so the second way that we should show our trust is to always do the right thing. Do not try or struggle to escape the reality of difficult circumstances we face on worldly ways. Some, when they experience difficulty in their lives, they go drinking alcohol, taking drugs, all day watching TV, playing games, and many spend their time eating and sleeping. Worse, do not drown yourself in worries and fears, regrets, hopelessness, and even commit suicide. That's what happened to this jailer. Knowing that the prison doors were open. He thought that Paul and Silas had gone.
he was thinking of ending his life. But Paul and Silas said, no, we are still here. And you see, that was an opportunity for Paul and Silas. They did the right thing by sharing to him and his family the good news of salvation in Jesus Christ. We have an open door to share the gospel. Lockdown or if we are asked to stay home and we could not meet in church, we should see this, we should take this opportunity an open door to share the gospel. Despite social distancing, we can reach out to people by phone and internet and pray and encourage them. Difficult times are actually opportunities for us to draw nearer to God, experience His goodness, witness Him, Make all things work together for good and for us to reach out to the lost and to the lost, the love of God. Allow me to conclude our Bible study by inviting you to prayerfully read Psalms 91 verses 3 to 10. And let us Appropriate God's promises to ourselves and to others who are trusting God in difficult times. In verse 3, the Lord has promised us, when you re read verse 3, Surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side and ten thousands at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked. And in verse 9, I love this, where it says, because you have made the Lord who is my refuge, even the most high, your dwelling place. Verse 10, no evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. God bless you. The Lord keep us one in prayer and in brotherly love. God bless.